Hi, I'm James. And I'm Colin. And welcome to Let's Talk Retro. And today we'd like to talk to you about this, the Retro Freak. So, it's all about the Retro Freak this video, and I suppose the only way of really describing it is it's sort of like the Retron 5. Uh, I'm sure most of you will know what one of those is. And uh, it's slightly better, I think, than the Retron 5. I've got a Retron, Retron 5, and not that there's much wrong with it. Um, apart from, I don't like putting the cartridges in because the pins aren't very good. Oh. Um, and there's people said that they've ruined the Retron 5 by putting the cartridges in. You've got to really push them in sometimes, oh, no. yeah. And when you pull them out, um, it's also people are saying it's damaging their cartridges. So I'm not too keen on it for that reason. But they may have sorted that out in later models. Mine was one of the first models that came out, I don't know. Um, but this to me looks like it's going to be really good. It's going to do more systems. It can do 12 systems altogether. Um, wow. Yeah, so I think what are those 12 systems? Well, we'll go through those in just a sec. I'll oh, okay. read them, they're all on the back here. This um, is planned. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Retro freak, retro freak, yeah. So, anyway, get your freak on, get your freak on, yeah. So, anyway, uh, there's two, two versions of this, okay. Uh, the standard version, which is I think it's £169 retail price, and this is the deluxe version, which is £199. Uh, the difference for the 30 quid is you get a cartridge um, adapter for playing NES games, and you also get a, an adapter that you can actually plug into it so you can plug in your own retro game controllers like for the Mega oh, Drive brilliant. and all the rest of it. Now, I know you can do that on the Retron 5, that's all built into the Retron 5. Um, but you know, they've got an adapter on this so you can do it, just got to pay a little bit extra for it. Um, so yeah, I mean looking at the front of the box, you've got a picture obviously of the Retro Freak system. You've got this little sort of, sort of like a vampire pixel character. Yeah, is it a cat? I don't know, I've sort of see, I, I seen it before somewhere but I don't know where. I don't know whether it's from a game or... Yeah, so who makes be. it? Cyber... Cyber... Um, Cyber gadget. gadget. Yeah, so a Japanese company apparently they've been making lots of gadgets for a while and to do with gaming and they've decided to go in and actually do a console. So, um, yeah, so it says on the back, on the back you've got like a diagram that shows you where all your cartridges go but we'll go through that when we get it out. On the back the spiel says, uh, Retro Freak Features. So number one is uh, support for more than 9,000 retro games across 12 platforms. Uh, HDMI out, which connects Yay. to the latest TVs. It saves directly to the Retro Freak, even cartridges with dead batteries. So that's good, so you've got a game with a dead battery, okay. you can still save that across. Uh, you can freeze and save at any point in the game, Yay. so we like that. Save states. Yeah, uh, you can use a USB, USB controller with it um, from the PS3 or PS4, etc. So there's plenty of scope for, um, That's good. you know, your, your, your hands are moulded to a certain controller <laughs> like <Yeah>. mine are. <laughs> um, it's um, got configurable controller button layout, so you can adjust that if you want to as well. It's got gameplay options to adjust image quality, sound and gameplay, etc. So you've got filters and you've scan got scan lines, lines yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> some um, people love them, some people don't. Yeah, I mean, it depends what you, what you like as your own sort of spec, isn't it? Um, you can inst install games from cartridges. Um, supports cheat functions for all platforms, so you can download cheat really? codes and use them as well. Is that the same? Is that like um, Game Genie, Action Replay? I presume so, I'm not really sure where you get it. There yeah. are instructions on the and on the already get them. In. Um, I think you've got to actually download the cheats. Oh, okay. Probably and you file can install them, yeah. save um, And you can use original retro console controllers, obviously as long as you've got the deluxe version with the adapter. Mm. Um, I know you can also patch, use patch files to patch games, so cool. I've seen a video of someone online where they've actually um, had a Japanese game. Oh, okay, I'll oh, run the English run patch. Run the English patch. Yeah, there's some it, wrestling games that it. people would love doing that with. All right. So, anyway, should we crack it open so we can actually have a proper look at this? And uh, Here we go. So we'll see oh, what box. we get. It's good. Yes, yeah, good quality box, especially coming from Japan. Often they can be quite cheap. So first of all, you've got um, a product warranty conditions bit of paper. Yeah, anything to note on here? Retro Freak support card. Yeah. Cybergadget.co.jp. So first of all, I've got here is a uh, an adapter for your your plug. Oh, it's one of those multi ones yeah, so where you, you've got like an yeah, English. Yeah, covers and, covers all the major countries. Yeah, there's an English one in there. There's a European one. Um, and then here we have the adapter for the controllers. Okay. Oh wow! Look at that. Apparently, the good thing about that is a bonus. It works with um, Windows. 
Oh, brilliant. Oh, so wow. apparently you can plug it in. And so if you've got other emulators or if you've got um, a ah. PC with hyperspin, you could use it with that, I presume. And I've read that Windows actually just recognises it when you plug it in, apparently. So it's PS2 port, the standard 9 pin you get on loads of Sega yeah. stuff. You can play Turbo Graphics Control. Turbo Graphics Control can go in there, apparently. I bet you can guess what that is. Leave a comment if you know. The great one. Uh, I'm trying to get comments left. Yeah, yeah, what's that? Leave a comment. <coughs> so that's your, uh, your controller that you get as part like of your that. extra... It's got some weight to it as well. Yeah, it's, it's well made, isn't it? Yeah. It is well made. It is it's nice. you've got stuff inside it. Not it's probably just, worth um, buying just for the, that to play on your... Uh, so you can get that separately if you want it. I, don't, I, I presume so, I don't know. Um, so what have we got in here next? Oh, we've got the controller. So they've got their actual own controller, which is... Sort of you'll you'll recognise just like a SNES controller. Yeah, so it's very much like a SNES controller. Retro Freak. It's got Retro Freak on the back. There you go. Yeah. So the, it's was, not got Wi-Fi like or, or Bluetooth or anything. So it's got to be everything's got to be plugged in by a USB. One or, of those big things that you always get. Yeah. Uh, so, what are they called? Oh yeah, I don't know. They're like uh, farads, so, is it? Something to do with the current, so, current yeah. currency or uh, stops interference. I think. Yeah, something like that. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then we got a HDMI cable. So it's wow! Got the have you ever seen the HDMI cable? Yeah, look, 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 this is what it looks like. Exciting. <laughs> but it's good that they include them. There's lots of lots of things there mm. these days. That's so few. Um, I'm surprised how many times you buy, buy a Blu-ray player or something like that, and it's not got one in there. And there's a HDMI cable for some reason, the HDMI to micro Ooh. HDMI. And uh, what's this? Oh, so this one is going to be the adapter for your NES cartridges. So put your NES cartridges into this that. This reminds me of like the has it Honey Bee cartridge used to get? Oh yeah, yeah. these adapters that look at that. Yeah, it's got that's got some weight to it. It's all quite Retro well made. Isn't freak it? made in China. Good stuff. There's some pin action. And finally we're on to the pin action. The main event, the uh, unit itself. Let's uh, get this out. This is all well wrapped as well. So there we go, that's the, wow. the main unit. And uh, if you want to hold on to that, I'll just go through what the systems it's are and what's in. Quite heavy. Yeah. I'd say it's <coughs> lighter than a Dreamcast. And I'd say about as heavy as a Game Gear full of batteries. Uh, right, yeah. But so yeah. if we look on it, then the, so the, uh, the 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 connection at the, the the slot at the back. If you look on the back of the console, you've obviously got um, an on-off. There's an on-off switch there, isn't there? There's a micro SD card slot. Yep. And a HDMI out. Oh yeah, little PowerPoint. Yeah. And on the so if we go from the cartridges from the top of the back. So we go for that one first. So yes, starting by looking at the top of the console, the top slot is where you put your Sega Mega Drive and Genesis games. In the middle you put your Super Famicom and SNES games. And in the bottom slot you put your Famicom games and your NES games via the supplied converter. And of course it plays both PAL and NTSC. And moving on to the front of the system, the uh, slot underneath the RetroFreak logo is where you put your PC Engine, PC Engine Super Graphics and Turbo Graphics 16 games. The slot on the right, which is slightly wider, is where you put your Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games. And of course underneath that you've got your three USB ports, your controllers and your controller adapter. So that means on this system you can play your Famicom games, your NES games, your SNES and Super Famicom games, your Mega Drive and Genesis games, your Game Boy games, your Game Boy Color games, your Game Boy Advance games, your PC Engine games, your Super Graphics games, your Turbo Graphics 16 games, and plus, we heard that there is support on the way via the gear converter for Game Gear, Sega Mark III, and Sega 1000 cartridges. Although, unfortunately, we hear that Master System games do not fit this converter. So, next, let's have a quick look at the system's menus and how to install the game onto it. So once your Retro Freak loads up, this is the main menu which you will be greeted with and uh, as you can see up in the top right hand corner where it says information, underneath that says micro SD card and that says loading, 
because each time it loads, it just loads up the, the games from the micro SD card. Some people say when they've got a lot of games on there, it can take up to five minutes, but you see it didn't take very long for mine. And next to that, you've got the internal storage, which is three gigabytes, which is what you get with this system. And uh, you can actually put ROMs of games that you've already got. Um, if you've got the ROMs for the games you own, you can just put them on the SD card and they will play. Obviously, for legal reasons, you need to actually have the game, so say. Um, but I'm going to show you now how to actually load a game now from um, an actual cartridge. So you just get the cartridge and you stick it in the slot. So I'm going to load an F0 onto it here, as you see. So that's in the uh, SNES slot. And it just loads up very quickly like that and says, do you wish to install the game to the micro SD card after installing? You can play without the cartridge. So say yes. It says game successfully installed to the micro SD card. And now if we go over to the micro SD, um, to the micro SD chart section, just loading back in. Um, it just takes a minute just to update that you've added a game. There we go. And if we go across to Super Famicom or SNES, as it's known here in the UK, go down to uh, hopefully to F and we should see F0. There we go. The game's been added to the system. Now you see next to it's got a cartridge, and you may have noticed as I come down, uh, the, I think it was Cool Spot. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, Cool Spot. I've already played. So once you've played a game, it adds a thumbnail to it next to it, so you can identify the game by the thumbnail as well. Just going back to F Zero though. So we've not got a thumbnail because we've not played that yet. From here, you can uh, delete the game, and you can also uh, transfer the save data back to the cartridge mm. if you want to. Also at the top, if I just press this button, you can see we've got a little menu that pops out. And at the moment we're on large because we've got like the large cartridges and thumbnails. You can change the thumbnails to smaller and then you can go right down to compact, which is just no, no sort of thumbnail. It's just uh, the name of the game. I quite like to have it on large though, so we'll go back to large. And then you'll also notice there's another option down the bottom where you can actually have it search or filter your games by different things like year, rating, and developer. Um, but I think title's fine for most people, it's fine for me. So uh, if we go back down to F0, we'll just uh, load it up and show you the game loaded up. Show you what it briefly plays like, I'm not gonna play much of it. So we select the game, and then you can see it's got no internal storage at the moment on the autosave. There's no save state because we're not saved anything. We're not played at all, obviously. So you just click play when you're ready. And then your game loads up nice and quickly. So uh, just going to set this up a quick Grand Prix. Just so you can have a quick look at what it looks like. I'm not going to play too much of it. And uh, love a bit of F0 Me, one of my favourite games of all time. Not just one of my favourite SNES games. Definitely one of my favourite racers. So uh, as you can see, the, the pixels look really nice, bright and sharp to me. Uh, playing it in 4.3, not stretching it or anything like that. You can stretch it to 6, 6.9. Oops, didn't mean to press that. So if you press the home button on the menu, which is what I was trying to press, you see you get the in-game menu. For me, you can toggle on cheats if you've got some installed. And you can also look at your save states, you've got 1 to 99. Um, you can also save and load your save states from here and capture screenshots. Uh, there's also some filters. I think they're much the same as on the Retron 5. Two times cell, super two times cell, uh, super eagle, scale two times, LQ times, HQ two times, and then back to none. I mean, they don't really do much for me. And again, you can put your scan lines on and off. Again, I don't really like scan lines. Um, and you can reset back to the, the cartridge back to the beginning. Just turn the scan lines on so you can see the effects. I mean, it doesn't really look like a CRTV TV to me. Uh, just looks like a picture with a load of lines across it. So I prefer not to have those on. I like the most crispest of the pixels being shown in the HD from your HDMI output. So then you just go back to your main menu and uh, now you'll see that it's got an auto save state is on the internal storage. Um, so that if we wanted to play the game again now, it's automatically saved where we exactly where we left off. Just click play and we're straight back in to where we left off, which is nice. No need to bother with uh, the old password systems and stuff like that anymore. 
So then you just go back to your main menu. We go back into your Super Famicom games. You see now we've played it. We've got like a thumbnail next to it. And that's basically all there is to the uh, setting up a game and playing games on this system. It's really nice and easy. Um, so if you look down the bottom right hand corner, we've got a few more options that we can have a look at. Um, we've got System. And on this you've got your console region. Usually I've got mine set to auto. You've got auto last load state is on. Um, you can turn that off. Auto start cartridge on insertion is off. Automatically import saves on the first run. Periodically backup saves in game. Um, your internal storage you can have a look at. You can change your screenshots that you can take from PNG to JPEG. There's a file manager. You can write a firmware uh, update request which is uh, the uh, file that you need to help you update the system and uh, store the various options you'd expect to see in the system mm. settings really and uh, there's also a manual which is built in which is really nice it's uh, categorized but you can go through the whole lot shows you the dif different systems available uh, what everything is on the system how to set it up and uh, how to do your update if you need to do an update if there's one available and then the basic controls, that goes through your controller options and how to play a game, the different cartridge adapters you can use um, and how to quit the game, turn off the system, using the micro SD card, setting it up so everything's there on board just ready for you when you need it, so it's uh, great stuff um, and then like I was telling you, there's a neat little feature that I like about this a uh, little, little thing I was keeping to, for you, from you as a surprise and that is if you actually take this and You can put batteries in it! No, you pull that That is just the adapter really for your cartridges and that oh. is the actual unit Wow! So if you're going to take it out to a friend's house with you or go on your, on your holidays Or instead of taking a switch? Yeah, instead of taking a switch Or if you take a, a Raspberry Pi even smaller probably than a Raspberry Pi like that um, so you don't have to take this bit if you're going around a friend's house or if you're going to go on holiday. All you need to do is take that bit, HDMI cable, power cable and controller. Hey, what and a cool you're away. design! What a cool design. Um, really again, it's not quite as great looking perhaps as the Retron 5 that was a bit futuristic and all the rest of it. It's like but I think the plastic's nice. better quality, isn't it, than what the Retron 5 is. And mm. Even though it's... Even though it's not sort of the most amazing thing to look at, I quite quite like it's plain, simple hey, it's great. design. It's nice curves on it and everything. So that's going to um, replace my Retron Five, and uh, hopefully I'm going to get a lot more enjoyment out of this because it's going to. I'm not going to be worried about it breaking my uh, cartridges mm. or breaking the pins in here. So anyway, so that's our unboxing of the Retro Freak and what it's all about. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, James, what they got to do till next time? Keep it retro, everyone. Yeah, keep it retro, and we will see you again very soon.